Greetings and welcome to our service. A special welcome to those who are here, but also for most of you who are watching our service online. As we gathered or as we joined uh, to worship God, we acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which Wesley is built, but also uh, the lands that we're worshiping God from. We pay our respects to their elders past, present, and emerging. This morning or this week, we are focusing on the parable of the talents. So hopefully in our time together in worship, uh, we may find new ways or uh, new possibilities of looking at these parables of what it means for us as an individual and as a community together. Let's worship God. God is the creator of the heavens and earth. Jesus is our Redeemer, our Savior, our friend. Jesus has come to show us God's love and teaches us to love one another. The Holy Spirit moves in us, brings us together, and guides us in life. The Spirit reminds us that everything comes from God. So let us share in all of the good gifts of God. Now we're going to sing to God be the glory, great things he has done. Let's join our hearts and our minds in our prayers. Lord, we gratefully acknowledge the gifts you have given to each of us for service in your world. Gifts of teaching, healing, inspiring, challenging and creating are all among 
the myriad of things you have placed in our lives. Direct our lives to use these gifts as we reach out to our neighborhood and nation, witnessing to your love and your healing mercy. We know that when things seem dark or are dazzlingly bright, when troubled times assail of peace reigns, there you are with us. Continue to guide and challenge our lives. Lead us in pathways of service away from trails of fear. Open our hearts to receive your healing, transforming love that we might serve you more faithfully. Lord of mercy and justice, you have given us so many talents and gifts to be used in your world. You have given us these gifts because you trust us to use them well, and you will be with us in all our work. But we disappoint you when we denigrate the value of the talents or become so fearful of failure that we don't believe that we are capable of helping in this world. Lord, forgive us. Help us to trust in the gifts you have given to us and to trust in your guidance in using them. Forgive us when we are fearful, stubborn, apathetic, indifferent to the needs around us. Give us hearts for serving you all our days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Words of assurance. God is making all things new. When we repent and turn back to God, we are forgiven. We are given a fresh start, a chance to do justice, love, mercy, and walk humbly with God. So we go and share the good news and seek justice for all. Amen. All right, let's hear the first reading for this morning. Thank you, Dennis. This first reading is from uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 11, on matters primarily concerning the return of Christ. Concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written for you or to you, for you yourselves know very well what the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labour pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, you are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live in him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Dennis. Um, I use this first reading just to give us an idea of what's been hanging around in the minds of the early Christians, because what I wanted to get at is how do we know the voice of Jesus and how do we know the voice of a particular community? So this is one I, good idea of, um, of a reading that gives us um, a background of what was going on in the minds of those early Christians, especially the second coming of Christ. Anyway, uh, we will get to that when we heard from the 
from the reading uh, of the Gospel of Matthew. But let's sing our next song, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Our second reading this morning is from St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, verses 14 to 30, on matters concerning the end of the age. It is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one each according to their ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things, I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents and I have made two more talents. Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. 
enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the 10 talents. For to all who have, more will be given. And even what they have, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. I remember one of our family reunions uh, which was held in Brisbane some years ago and as part of our plan that each family were invited to come up with an item uh, for our talent um, night show. So the invitation was also open for individuals who may wish to share their talents. And I remember one of my nephews, he was seven or eight years at the time, who is now a lawyer in New Zealand. He put up his hand and he said, I have a talent, without hesitation. And he, we said, okay, show us what you got. So he went up to the front, rubbed his hands, and put, uh, put his hands together in an oval shape and blew between the thumbs, and he goes, doo, 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 doo. We were all laughing, but it just kept going until nobody laughs no more. So I was thinking, what was the talent there? And I thought, well, making us laugh was the talent he shared. Takes me back to the translation of the word talent. It is simply a word for money, or treasure in Greek but a word whose English translation also refers to natural abilities. In other words, the natural or the given ability of a person to do something. First time I saw Mr. Bean on TV when I was a kid, I thought he was crazy. <laughs> but he is the example of someone who has that natural ability to make people laugh. It only takes his nostrils to do the work. <laughs> <clears throat> Metaphor or parable is such a wonderful gift in the hand of an author. It gives us the opportunity to find our own place and meaning in the stories. And honestly, I personally struggled to define the grace of God in all these parables and wondered if there was a distinctive difference between the voice of Jesus and the voice of Matthew's community. The parable of the talents comes after the parable of the ten virgins, where there is a strong urgency to be prepared and be ready because no one knows the hour and the time. It feels like the bearer of the message is under a lot of pressure, urging the audiences to decide immediately, be ready, be prepared, or you will be doomed. You know, and I alluded to the reading from Thessalonians earlier, the expectations of the second coming of Christ was hanging at the back of their minds. And it makes sense if we think of those early Christians preparing for the second coming of Christ and the threat of hell and brimstones at the same time. If they don't repent their sins, they will go 
to that place, <laughs> if you, you know, to the literal interpretation of that text. So if this is where, this is where I'm struggling to define the voice of Jesus and the voice of Matthew's community. It is, Je um, is it Jesus who says, be prepared or take away the talents from the lazy slave? Or is it Matthew's community's voice? This is what Jesus said in chapter 9 of Matthew's gospel. It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. That's a good news for me. And maybe, maybe that's a, that's a voice of Jesus in my reading of this. So if these sinners can be identified in the category of the foolish virgins or the slave with one talent in these parables, what hope do they have? if they don't have the ability to be prepared and multiply their talents. We learn from the healing stories in the Gospel of Matthew and other Gospels that some of the sick people which Jesus encountered in his ministry were people obsessed by demons. That's, that's the language they use, obsessed by the demons. That was the only way to explain that sort of illness at the time. But what if they simply had some sort of disability and mental health issues? What if, what if that was the case? And they said, this person is obsessed by the demons. So do you think that Matthew's community could come up with something like that at the time? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think they could explain possessed by um, possessed by demons in any other language or in any other form. So imagine the burden on families and communities with that sort of issues. They could not come up with any other way to explain the situation. They are certain that a person was possessed by demons. So here the master saying, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those, for to all those who have more will be given and they will have an abundance. That's bad news. Sometimes I wonder if we had been driven by the theology and the mentality of Matthew's world that everyone is expected to have the ability to gain more in abundance. The reason why I'm passionate on this and I came out strong <laughs> this way, as a parent in year 12, I struggled this year, honestly. I struggled as a parent this year. And I'm conscious of the year 12 students this year as they are facing with their final exams. I got to a point where Expectations must be stripped and prioritize the most important things in life after learning from that struggles this year. What had happened globally reveals that there is something wrong with the system and the way we are operating as a society. We are expected or to be expected to arrive at a certain point by taking a certain pathway. You are either in or out by taking this particular way. But I think it should depend on what we prioritize. There are hundreds of ways to get there, but because of the expectations, it becomes a burden on those who do not have the ability to walk a certain way, or perhaps not the right time to walk the road. Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. In fact, this is the very reason and the purpose of Jesus' ministry is to make a difference for those who are outside of the system. And this is where I define the voice of Jesus comparing to the voice of Matthew's community. And perhaps the reason why I, I was thinking this way because I came through that way. I mean, I, I took a, a different pathway 
and I still arrive at the same destination. So why would it be different? Um, why would it be different for anyone who can go through the way that I came through? Why do we always have to focus and being under pressure by going through the same pathway? And if we continue to put more emphasis on the value of wealth, money, and being well prepared as the parable of the talents presented as it is this morning, and how we are interacting and live as a society, then the rich will continue to get richer as the poor will continue to be poorer. Because that is what the parable represents today. Take away the one talent from the lazy and, and from those who don't have the ability and give it to those who already have more than enough. The first time I have been, I have seen homeless people in, in this country, the first time I first, when I first arrived, it was a quite shocking experience because I've never seen such thing in my life. And the only reason why a person is homeless in the islands is when mental health is involved. So there's no control, they're just wandering around. But maybe it's, it's something to do with the weather as well. Like you can sleep under a coconut without any troubles. And the, the sort of a community connection that no one's left out on the street. You know, they'll be taken up, be welcome in their home, feed them. And so it was a shocking experience when I first arrived. And for the first six years of my ministry, homeless is one of the challenging issues that I had to deal with from time to time having been living next to the church. There's always someone to knock on the door. Made me wonder about the system that we are part of, that just reducing those who do not have the ability to make a difference for themselves. At the beginning of Matthew's Gospel, we find Jesus begin his ministry with his first sermon. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, blessed are those who hunger. Blessed are the merciful. So it, it, it seems to me that there is an opportunity for those who cannot make the difference for themselves, depending on those who have the ability to do it. Jesus' mission was driven by God's unconditional love for the world, especially those who usually found themselves outside of the system. Jesus' ministries restores them back to their communities, and this is where our ministry and mission as a church came to existence. And I'm sure that you all know, we all know, there are so many homeless and hungry people on our streets. We hear the struggles of people with mental health all the time, especially during the lockdown. And surely there are people without jobs for the last six months. There are students who are feeling lost at the end of this school year. And maybe there are parents who may continue to deal with the impact of online schooling for their children. So if our mission is based on Jesus' ministry and mission to make a difference in the world around us, then here comes the question, are we willing to use our talents, ability, wealth, and ourselves to make a difference in our communities. If somehow the parable is aiming at those who have the talents and the ability to make a difference, but not sharing it for the common good of all, then we may be the one who buried one talent. And let me say this is from experience. Wesley is a well-equipped community, both talent and education, and I am sure I'm sure we have the ability and skills to think and work out together how we may impact our community here in Geelong City. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's offer our prayers of intercession. Gracious God, you suffer with those who suffer. We pray for those who are denied that they need to leave 
and those whose dreams have been shattered by the pandemic and disaster. We pray especially for those who suffer in a season of plenty. Reach out and bring healing through the hands of your faithful people. Holy Comforter, Healing Spirit, grant your peace to those who are sick and those who grieve, and especially those of our own church families who are suffering today. Radiate through their lives with the light of your presence that renewed healing and strength may be theirs. We pray, dear Lord, for those whose actions offend us most and for those whom we have learned to fear and despise. Through your great love, make tender all hearts hardened by hatred, bigotry, and suspicion, and work your justice among us. God of hope and new life, help us to see the joy and abundant life you intend for us. Forgive our short-sightedness and often miserly attitudes toward the created world which you have entrusted to our care. Give us your peace, peace which is not so much an absence of trouble as an awareness of your guiding presence and bounteous gifts in all that we do. For these, our prayers, we bring to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you all for um, joining our service this morning. Um, we have a couple of notices. Um, on the 28th, it's in our newsletter, it is the men's breakfast. So thanks to those who have um, informed us of their participation. As you may well aware that we are working around restrictions and numbers, so it is very important to reserve your spot, and it will be helpful for us to plan for, uh, for the day. The picnic day on uh, the 29th of November, um, I'm going to put the map uh, in the next week uh, bulletin so that you know exactly where we'll, we will be gathering. But let me say this, it was originally aiming at Sunday at five uh, families, but we have been isolated from each other as a community for a long time, and we may not be able to gather in our church for some time. So this is an opportunity uh, where we could have something together as a community. And at the moment, uh, 50 people is allowed outdoors. So please let us know if you're planning to come along. Uh, the other one is um, you might receive an email this, um, this week um, with a, a document where you, it is required your input. Uh, last Wednesday night, the Church Council had a special meeting uh, trying to sort out how our community, how our services may look like in the next three, uh, two or three months. So um, the, the question is very simple. Um, it's it asking you of your commitment whether you'll be back, whether you'll be willing to come back to Wesley um, during that time, or you'll be happy to continue to worship um, on YouTube and by doing that, it gives us a better understanding of who we, we may be rostering for, you know, cleaning um, at the door, because we really need those things in place, but also gives us a better of understanding um, of who we may invite from time to time to our worship here um, at Wesley. But we're all hoping that, that we will be gathered to normal sometime uh, in the future, but that that document is just simply asking your, um, where you are at the moment, whether you'll be coming back to Wesley for worship or you'll be happy to continue with the, with the YouTube. But also, um, let me remind you, if we come back here in numbers, let's say 50 or 20, our services will, will be live streamed for those who will be watching online. So there's nothing that's going to um, change our online worship we will continue to do it this way but just wanting to know how many people that are willing to come back from time to time um apart from that um we just sing our last song lord the light of your love is shining
Let's pray. Bless us, O God, as we go out into the world with the gifts and the talents that you have given to each one of us so that we may touch and inspire those who are in our community who may not be able to make a difference for their own. And may the blessings of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us now and forever. Amen.